What's up, what's up, everybody? Okay, we got a lot to talk about. We got to talk about the newest and latest and greatest, the, the, the newest edition of Kathy Wood, right? We're going to talk about Tom Lee. Uh, now, he, he's made some some calls as far as small cap goes, but he's also come out and said a lot of things. Now, I will get into the animal spirits. He did, that is his words, not mine. Uh, but he, he said a lot of things that actually line up. If you guys have been following me, then you know I've been talking about a crash next year and now he's coming out and thinking that's his potential bear case late spring early summer there's a lot of things just lining up to this but i want to get into his latest fund we're going to talk about that today just kind of break down what he said and honestly i just i just like it when i come up with something and then other people just start falling in line or i don't know coincidentally or, or not uh you know it just Builds, the, builds just that confidence, you know, at least everybody's seeing seeing what I'm seeing. So today we're going to be talking about Tom Lee, and now he is calling for a year-end rally. One of the more impressive rallies, uh, if you guys if you guys have been following me, let's just, uh, let me pull up the charts really quick, because he's the one talking about the uh, the Russell. Let me, here we go. Now, if you've been looking at, at, at my my charts, this red line right here is literally his call out. He said the Russell is going to get to 300 by the end of year. Now, jokingly, I started this red line back here when he'd called it out. And I was like, eh, we're in some trouble. You know, like it was actually up here and it, it sold off and went sideways. And it's coming back with a vengeance. Uh, but this video will not be about small cap. It'll actually be a lot about tech. Uh, and one of his new uh, ETFs that had recently just launched. Uh, so I'm just going to take the charts away just for now. we got to get into talking. So he believes there's a strong possibility for a year-end rally due to several factors, including, so we got the recent uh, post-election market surge. I'm going to call that the, uh, the Trump pump. Okay, uh, We got deregulations and mergers and, and in his words, unleashed animal spirits you have to just tick tock that yeah people are making youtube shorts about that uh i'm not sure if pocahontas is involved uh if we're painting the colors of the wind uh or what he actually meant by that uh but bring it on okay uh yeah send it okay now, he does acknowledge a, a, a potential for a year-end rally, but he also expresses concerns about a potential market top in the next six months. I mean, where have you heard that before? Which is, which is wild. Uh, again, yes, I call it out. There's things that I see in the charts. There are people with just more money, more contacts, and more intel. I, uh, that's just kind of what I, what I believe. And I believe he's probably one of the guys. If there's going to be somebody in the know, there's a reason why he's on TV. And just full disclaimer, I do think these guys, they kind of have their place as far as the market goes. They have their place on the board. I'll put it that way. Whether it's manipulated, being used as manipulation, uh, whatever it is. Uh, anyway, I just kind of, again, I, I like when their views line up with mine. So... Uh, Next six months, due to now he thinks there's a, what he said exhausted firepower. So basically, we just run out. He's been the one toting a lot about we got all this money on the side, uh, but maybe we run out. Uh, you know, he, he calls it unhinged market expectations. Uh, and right now, things have gone nuts. We've we've all seen uh, Tesla and Palantir, for example, absolutely just sending it. And if you are someone who values stocks. Uh, you know, what has the company done fundamentally to grow into those prices? You know, nothing's changed. A bunch of momentum traders have come in, but how do you sell that to the investors that are thinking, hey, price per share, this is pretty expensive. The overall S&P, very expensive. So for everyone thinking, hey, what should I do in 2025? That's, my, that's actually going to be my next video. There's a lot of people talking about it, and I kind of agree that there just might be a a yield, a yield search. People just want yields. If they think the market's going to pull back, go sideways, chill. Maybe the maybe things like Tesla needs to grow into their valuations. Maybe they they just want their uh, their their dividends or, or bonds. You know, uh, Buffett. And again, this will be the, the next video. Buffett's got a lot of cash right now and just buying bonds. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, again, I'll do a deep dive and bring that on the next one. So just again, make sure you're you're subscribed. Uh, turn a little bell not notification on for that. Anyway, Lee points out there's a lot of margin debt. It's been flat for the past four months, indicating a potential upside fuel. But additionally, he notes the sentiment readings are not extreme with the VIX, especially the VIX normalizing recently. So he points out two potential market scenarios. A, a bullish scenario, just continued strong 
rally through the end of the year and into January, followed by a potential sell-off in late spring or summer, which is everything I've been talking about. Uh, now, his bearish scenario is just a sharp market downturn in late spring or summer, uh, potentially triggered by aggressive uh, Fed rate cuts. So, uh, you know, I, I've kind of seen it, it back and forth. It, it almost just sounds like when he talks about his bearish case, he just jumps to that. And when he talks about his bullish case, he's like, hey, we're on the up and up, watching out for that. Uh, I don't know if I should just start dividing mine into two. I just kind of think that's how it's going to pan, pan out. So his new one, his new ETF, and now I will pull this one up because this one, this one's interesting, very interesting. And I do think, I think if I was going to start an ETF, it would be like this. His Granny Shots ETF, his Fundstrat Granny Shots U.S. Large Cap ETF. And now I'm on the hourly, so I'll spread it out to make it look like there's something going on. Uh, this is, a, a again, a fairly new one. Um, so it's based on a thematic Stock, pr- stock, pricking, stock picking strategy. Uh, now, Tesla is one of the top holdings in the ETF, uh, and he, he, he's been talking a lot about how Tesla's pushed it up. Um, just this absolute surge it's been on. Today, we finally had a red candle, uh, like finally, on, on Tesla. So he shares his observations from watching Wall Street analysts and, and commentators, noting that many have been cautious about the market in recent months. I think a lot of people, there was just not a lot of money being allocated pre-election you know that, that there was a lot of uncertainty and you're seeing it now markets clearly favored one person over the other as far as winning uh they got that one things are absolutely surging uh, now he does contrast this with this current bullish sentiment and the strong fundamentals supporting the market you know he provides his outlook on, on tesla's future growth emphasizing the importance of a realistic expectations and potential challenges in achieving high growth rates this is something tesla talked about they're, they're talking about getting back to their old days of growing 30 50 percent uh and energy storage is something i'm huge on but we all know tesla's timeline we we know how elon talks and, and just kind of how things progress it gets there you know elon's not wrong he's just often very very early in in, in his timeline uh so there is definitely a world where this price surge definitely met with some numbers uh it there has to be some kind of cool down i personally think um but anyway before i i, I even wrap this up i want to just shout out one more time guys make sure you're subscribed uh, i do have a patreon where I, I do post all my plays if you guys ever want to check it out it's just in the links in the description uh I, again we're not going to do the the nine million sales pitches uh but we are up over 100 percent this year that's two years in a row over the last two years i've had four losing trades uh summed up to a couple we'll call it just shy of a few hundred bucks uh definitely made a lot more than that made thousands um I, I, again moving on so this granny and this thematic stock picking thing, very interesting. Definitely caught my eye when hearing about it because if, if, if you're new to me, sorry, guys, I've been doing this for 12 years uh, as of January. At least. So 11, 11 years, 10 months, 11 years, 11 months. Um, <clears throat> I, I talk a lot about how there's a theme each year. You know, there, there's EVs one year. The year before was like pot stocks, you know, and then there was a... Uh, there was vaccine stocks that each year kind of just has it has its own theme. I think last year was CPI. Uh, no trader has ever worried about CPI up until the Rona. Go go watch anybody's YouTube videos. Anybody talking about it? Just just not a thing. But this one kind of targets it. And check this out. So my head is actually, yeah, we're blocking Meta, but it's a, it's got style. We got seasonality, PMI recovery, energy, cybersecurity. Uh, millennials, <laughs> global labor su- suppliers, and e- easing, I'm about to say erasing, just erasing financial conditions. That's where we just go with 100% Bitcoin. So it breaks all these down. And like, so here's their holdings and, and how many, uh, it, it almost color, well, it almost, it, it literally color codes each one. So we do have Meta, Google, we have Garmin, uh, some other popular names, Cat, NVIDIA, Apple, uh, Tesla falls under the uh, millennials and global labor suppliers. Interesting, same with Microsoft uh, and Amazon. 
Uh, meta falls under that one, but also style, tilt, seasonality, and easing financial conditions. It's very interesting how they have all of these themed and how they have their picks uh, and their overall holdings. So it, it's one I, I'm not going to bore you with. It, people love to come to me and ask me for like technical analysis. At that point, we're just going to talk about inflows and outflows of this particular ETF. Uh, we'll see. It, it, it's hard to zone things out when things are being moved around. People, it, this, this is something we struggled with a lot with, with Kathy Woods. You know, she would have her Arc G, and then you know, like, oh, this thing's moving up and down. Like, hey, it was on those parameters, but then they sold this ticker. You know, things when they're when they're constantly changing, you kind of just hope on the success of the ETF. At least that's how I found success. If, if you're going to trade these, uh, this particular one, very new ETF. As you can see, we got four trading sessions on it right now. Uh, I got to say, it, it being brand new, the way they're doing things, I personally like it. So for someone who doesn't trade and you want to invest, maybe you just want to let them pick the stocks. There, there's a lot of people that just want to park their money and let it grow. Uh, and a, a lot of them, hopefully they know about the S&P 500. Right? That's one of the easiest ones to buy. This one might edge out a little bit. Uh, pick it right. You could it, it could absolutely destroy the gains from the S&P, I think. Um, so I'll, I'll wrap it up here. I want to bring it to your attention and just, uh, again, shout out to, uh, to, to Tom Lee. Uh, and again, guys, uh, I've only ever talked about three crashes on this channel. I'm talking about a fourth one right now. I'm three for three. This is not a fear mongering video. And I've told you guys in the past, none of those are, it's just kind of what I see coming. Uh, so if I'm right, fourth one's right around the corner. It looks like Tom Lee sees that as well. So anyway, I'll wrap it up here again, subscribe buttons on and I will see you guys in the next one.